church? Hell no. Are you no longer feeling comfortable in church? This podcast is for individuals who are desperately missing God, but don't know how to find Him. Substance abuse, domestic violence, sex offenses, acrimonious divorce can contribute to discomfort in the church. For these individuals, church is just not an option anymore. Ordained minister Dennis Hall and his guests invite you to listen to this podcast for topics that are inspiring, uplifting, and will bring hope to those who just feel church is not relevant in their lives today. I'm Dr. Dennis Hall, and I'm delighted that you're listening. It's the Christmas season, and honestly, I'm sort of filled with joy and peace and hope and uh, enjoying this Christmas season. I have spent the last 10 days traveling across the panhandle of Florida, across Mississippi, a few days in the Louisiana, then up into North Carolina. And uh, boy, on this trip, one could see that the Christmas season is in full swing. There were Christmas lights and decorations everywhere I looked. Uh, and as I traveled, I met... Uh, uh, I ate, excuse me, not met, but I ate most of uh, my meals in restaurants. And and I noticed that, that frequently there were small groups uh, dining and uh, celebrating Christmas. And they were uh, sometimes exchanging uh, gifts. And I couldn't help myself, but I sort of made it possible for me to sit close to them and sort of eavesdrop on what was going on in these groups that were obviously celebrating uh, Christmas in some kind of a way. And you know what was really noticeable to me is that there was almost nothing said about the birth of Jesus or or celebrating uh, the birth of Jesus. I had one person suggest to me that, well, maybe that was just not an appropriate occasion to mention the birth of Jesus when it seems that this is surely uh, what it's all about. So I sort of came away with the conclusion that uh, we have this major holiday, Christmas, where gifts are exchanged and there's very little focus on the birth of Jesus. Now, I know many of you uh, have heard the news story about Christmas displays in the Iowa State Capitol in Des Moines. Anyone putting up a Christmas uh, display in the Capitol had to obtain permission from the government uh, and the Satanic Temple. It's hard to even believe this. The Satanic Temple obtained permission from the Iowa government to erect a statue of a goat-headed figure surrounded by Satanic symbolism. And yes, Christians staged prayer, prayer rallies and uh, protest and, uh, and expressed outrage over this. And then last Thursday, uh, the tension sort of boiled over when Michael Cassidy, a former U.S. Navy pilot and Christian, destroyed the satanic display. And then he surrendered himself to law enforcement to be booked on account of criminal mischief. This is what he said. He said, the world may tell Christians to submissively accept the legitimization of Satan, but none of the founders of the U.S. would have considered government sanction of satanic altars inside a Capitol building as something to be protected by the First Amendment. And he went on to say, you know, I saw this blasphemous statue and was outraged. My conscience is held captive to the word of God, not to bureaucratic decree. And so I acted. You know, many Christian leaders are hailing Cassidy as a Satan slayer and a Christian hero. The governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds, defended the approval given for this satanic display as something that should be allowed in a free society based on the First Amendment. You know, it's the same kind of political rhetoric that we're hearing uh, to defend 
anti-Semitic speech, hate speech. You know, in Christian circles, we often ask the question, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus have done if he found a satanic altar in the house of the people? Would he take a whip and destroy the altar, much like he did to the temple money changers in the first century? You know, Christians can be seduced into worshiping at this altar of free speech and expression, even when it infringes on their faith. Me personally, I think Michael Cassidy is a Christian hero. But I got to tell you, this story has really tangled my tinsel, tangled my tinsel in this Christian season. You may not know this, but the financial services company Deloitte has been doing a holiday retail survey for several years. Uh, this year, I was surprised to see Christmas displays being put up in retail stores before Halloween. I used to complain when they were being put up before Thanksgiving, but it seems like this, this uh, uh, pressure this on commercial buying is so great that I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to have Christmas displays in retail stores year-round. You know, Delo uh, Deloitte uh, has reported this year that Holiday spending average is almost $1,700 per family in the U.S. And for those making over $200,000 a year, those families, they're expected to spend uh, over $4,000 uh, in terms of gifts and holiday spending. And according to the National Federation of Retailers, the National Retail Federation, uh, holiday spending in the, the U.S. should reach $966 million, uh, almost $967 million. Now, that grabs my attention. I mean, approaching a trillion dollars of, of spending on holiday gifts. You know, based on this, uh, it appears that this uh, holiday Christmas spending amounts to an average of about $1,000 Per person. You know, when I was growing up, uh, my parents always had an abundance of gifts under the Christmas tree for us to open on Christmas morning. And uh, later in my adulthood, you know, my father was a factory worker and he didn't make much money. And, but later I learned that uh, my mother and father would start laying away gifts as early as March and April uh, so that they could make sure that we had ample gifts under our Christmas tree. And there were, uh, uh, you know, later in life when I was raising my children, I did the same thing. You know, I made sure there were ample gifts under the Christmas tree for, for the children to open on Christmas morning. And my observation is that my children did the same thing with their children, my grandchildren. Ample gifts under the trip Christmas tree on Christmas morning. Now, look, I am not Mr. Scrooge. And uh, I am all for children having gifts to open on Christmas morning. But I have begun to wonder if over the last three generations, that we've made a mistake in terms of the extent of gift giving at Christmas time. It seems that Christmas has become less of a religious holiday and more and more secular. You know, for many, maybe most, Christmas seems to be a time of seasonal decor, scrumptious foods, and intoxicating beverages. And the day after Thanksgiving is known as Black Friday, and it's part of, the, of, of an annual five-day holiday shopping spree that begins on Thanksgiving Day and continues through the following Monday, which is known as Cyber Monday. It's estimated that 200 million consumers shopped in stores and online during this time. Almost half shopped uh, online. 
So this has become a, a bigger piece of this commercial activity during this holiday season. And what really grabs your attention, it's reported that more than 40% of the holiday shoppers report that they do not earn enough income to cover their planned holiday and Christmas spending. They'll dip into their savings, take on credit card debt. Uh, they use the buy now, pay later services, and then even sometimes sell assets so that they can buy gifts at this time of the year. Now, all of this is happening as there's less and less focus on celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now, you know, and I know how much pressure there's been in our society about dropping the whole uh, reference to this time as Christmas and simply calling it the holidays, the holiday season. Uh, sometimes I get har cards from people wishing me happy holidays. And I think, well, I wish they had sent me a card that maybe showed a picture of the birth of Jesus. Now, uh, you know, there has been a debate that has gone on for centuries about whether Christians should even celebrate Christmas. You know, one argument against celebrating Christmas is that Christmas traditions surrounding the holidays have origins in paganism. Bells, candles, holly, yuletide decorations are all mentioned in the history of pagan worship. Well, let me encourage you today to, by saying that the use of these things in one's home certainly does not indicate any return to paganism. So, you know, the truth is, while there are pagan roots to some traditions, there are many more traditions associated with the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, the Savior of the world in Bethlehem. Bells are played to ring out the joyous news. Uh, candles are lit to remind us that Christ is the light of the world. A star is placed on the top of the Christmas tree to remember the star of Bethlehem. Another argument against celebrating Christmas is sometimes uh, aimed at the Christmas tree. And some will point out that the Bible forbids bringing trees into our home and decorating. And the passage that there is often cited is in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 16. But this passage refers to cutting down trees and chiseling the wood to make idols and decorating these idols with silver and gold for the purpose of bowing down before it to worship. This passage in Jeremiah should not be taken out of context and used to make any kind of legitimate argument against Christmas trees. In the past, uh, Christians who chose to ignore Christmas point to the fact that the Bible doesn't give us the date of Christ's birth. And many historians have argued that the climate in Israel and the practices of the shepherds in winter and the dates of the Roman census taking uh, point to Jesus being uh, born in a very different time of the year. But for the majority of Christians who do celebrate Christmas, they see this occasion as an opportunity to proclaim Christ as the reason for the season. Christ, the reason for the season. And in fact, there is just no legitimate scriptural reason not to celebrate Christmas. More and more, Christmas is being referred to, as I said earlier, as just the holidays in our society. Uh, the custom of exchanging gifts during the holidays is prevalent throughout American society. Among almost all of the uh, different religions, the different socioeconomic groups, gift giving is prevalent. And gift giving actually precedes Christmas, but it came to be associated with the Christian festival uh, early in Christian history. In early Rome, in December, Saturnalia 
was celebrated to honor the god Saturn. And the, fast, the festivities include a sacrifice in uh, Saturn's temple, as well as a public uh, banquet and continual merrymaking and, and lots of private gift giving. It was around the fourth century that the Roman custom of gift giving became linked to the biblical magi, the wise men who delivered presents to the infant Jesus. The Magi had presented Jesus with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then there's another Christian uh, narrative, a piece of Christian history that describes the gift-giving habits of the 4th century Christian bishop, St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, he was the inspiration for Father Christmas and Santa Claus. St. Nicholas of Meyer was linked to miracles. And, uh, you know, he was also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker because of that. And he became famous for secretly giving uh, gifts. St. Nicholas lived in the region of uh, present-day Turkey. And he became known for a series of miracles and benevolent acts that are recorded in a history book dating back to the ninth century. Nicholas uh, is reported to have rescued three girls from being forced into sex work. He did this by covertly and secretly delivering coal, uh, gold coins through their windows each night so that their father could pay a dowry for each of their girls to have them removed from from this plight but nicholas he was discovered by the father and what did he do he asked the father to keep his gifts a secret now as a result of this story and several others giving gifts began uh, became integrated into christian celebrations you know during the middle ages gift giving among ordinary people was largely just fruits and edible items and these items were thought to represent the gifts given by the magi to jesus it was during the 16th century that the custom of giving gifts became widespread in europe and some historians think that the focus on gifts for children was prompted by initiatives to reduce rowdiness in urban streets around christmas time and and it's thought that the parents uh, became interested in keeping their children away from these uh, street corrupting influences by giving them private gifts in their home and by the 1800s christmas day gradually became the main uh, occasion for exchanging gifts and uh, some of this uh, tradition can be attributed to the popularity of Clement Clark Moore's 1823 poem, The Night Before Christmas, and then later Charles Dickens' 1843 novel, A Christmas Carol. Now, I think most of us are familiar with this uh, poem, and in the poem, a uh, family on Christmas Eve is visited by St. Nicholas, who lands his sleigh on the roof, emerges from the fireplace and fills the hanging stockings with toys from his sack. We still tell this story today, uh, not so much by reading the poem, by just acknowledging St. Saint, uh, uh, Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus, coming to land on the roof in his sleigh. And then Dickens in his... Uh, Christmas Carol, he produces themes of festive generosity and family gatherings, and he tells the story of this uh, uh, miserably wicked Ebenezer Scrooge who is transformed into a kinder man and wakes up on Christmas Day and wants to uh, make donations and present gifts. And then as time went by, you know, when the 20th century rolled around, retailers, retailers in this new world in the 20th century found it to their advantage to encourage and endorse Christmas giving. 
uh, we were filled with consumer capitalism and mass marketing and it played a significant role in creating new buyers for products and helped to increase the magnitude of Christmas giving. You know, I, most of us have heard that obnoxious song, The 12 Days of Christmas. You know, you know the 12 days of Christmas. You know, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Well, one pundit took the time to calculate the cost of the 364 gifts in this song at $197,000. Now, a very Merry Christmas does not have to involve leaping lords and swimming song uh, swans or more spending than you can comfortably afford. To avoid a Christmas debt hangover, all of us should make a spending plan that we can stick to throughout this Christmas season. And don't forget the smaller expenses such as holiday meals that we might take to other people's homes or, or uh, travel around this time of year or pet boarding that, that may be needed or even snacks on the road and the holiday decor that we put up. All of this costs money. All of this costs money. Now, let me just say to you, it's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. And as I acknowledged earlier, I said this year, my tinsel's in a tangle. Why? Because in America, we have permitted extreme secularization of celebrating the birth of Jesus. I have literally met people who've grown up in America that did not know that Christmas was a celebration of the birth of Jesus. Now, on the topic of uh, giving gifts at Christmas, frankly, it seems like we could roll back gift giving to a more reasonable level. Now, Christmas is a time to remember Jesus and celebrate God-given family and relationships with others. Now, it's not a time for gloating over a gift you received or selfishness or gluttony what really matters is uh, more than how we celebrate is what we celebrate let me say that again what really matters is uh, is not how we celebrate but it's what we celebrate you know as long as we get that right we're on the right track and during this Christmas season, I want to urge you, find time to go to church. Maybe a Christmas Eve service. Listen to some Christmas music and perhaps even sing along. A great tradition would be for you to read the story of the birth of Jesus in the Bible. I think it would have an impact on you. And I hope this Christmas season you get a sense of of the impact that the birth of Jesus has had on the world. May God bless you during this Christmas season and throughout the new year. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.